Welcome to the ISO on the Gonzaga Nation Media Network. Today's guest, head coach of the University of Portland Pilots, Shante Leggins. Shante, let's get right to it. Head yeah, brother. First year on the bluff, 19 and 15, 7 and 7 in the WCC, exceeded a lot of expectations. I know you weren't satisfied because you're always yeah. grinding. You're always looking for areas to improve. Give us your recap of the past season. Uh, you know, I, I just being in the league was 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 amazing. You know, uh, getting to compete and trying to outwit and out coach guys and and seeing the talent level of this league. Um, you know, you 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 know, coming from the the big sky, which you have great coaches and, and, and different things like that. But th this was a whole different animal. You know, getting to I mean, you had to play games back to back. I, we had to play Gonzaga, St. Mary's, San Francisco, BYU. I mean, that's back to back to back to back. And so it was like, you know, there's no there's no game where you can say that's going to be a win. You know, that's a guaranteed win. I mean, there's just not one. I mean, BYU loses the Pacific and, you know, San Diego was playing well at, at early in the season. They got some things rolling. I mean, there's no like we're going to this. This is a W. And so. That was that was new um, coaching against some Hall of Fame coaches and and was also a lot of fun um, and just seeing if 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 our style could you know um, you know play at this level which I think it can you just got to get the right guys you got to have better players so that's that's something that was was a lot of fun learning this year. So you mentioned playing your style. Um, I know I had seen you guys play at Eastern Washington when you were the head coach there, mm -hmm. and you really spaced the floor, shot a lot of threes. Yeah. You were opportunistic in transition. Um, give, give us your own version of, of how you want the game played on both ends of the floor. Well, you know, you want, you want them to play offensively. You want them to be creative. You want them to go play the game and, 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 and do what they were doing at a young age that made him fall in love with the game. You don't want to put guys in boxes, especially on the offensive end. You know, that's the part that brings everybody to the game. Now you have those outliners like Draymond Green and, and, and Dennis Rodman, which you find you get lucky and you're, you're, you're excited to have those guys. But for the most part, guys come to this game because they've tried this crossover. They say in this fadeaway jump shot. So you want them to have that same, you know, creativity on the offensive end. And then defensively, you want to just be smart and understand and try to take away different things from teams so you want to have smart team and so um this year again we we had to switch middle of the season because due to injuries and different things like that and so you know we we lost our guy so we didn't have a post player so we had to post up our guards at times uh, and we still spaced the floor as much as possible um and you want the ball to move you know the, the ball is going to find the best shot if you're moving the ball and playing unselfish and so those are some of the things that we preach right when the guys get here on campus and so Defensively, you want to be smart. You, you don't want guys, you want to take things away from certain teams or certain players away from certain teams. Like when we played Gonzaga, we said, you know what? We're not going to let them score in the paint. You know what? They had 18 points in the paint. We did a great job there, but they also hit 18 threes. So, you know, so like, you know, we're giving records away, but there's something you got to take away from some of these teams and, and uh, not having the depth and different things like that. So, you know, just being smart defensively and then offensively, just letting the ball move and find the right guy and just let them play creative, you know, let them be creative on the offensive side. Coaches, like you just said, want smart players. How as a coach, can you accelerate the IQ of a player when they step on foot to campus? Because you have your occasional, mm -hmm. I don't want to call them basketball savants, say at the high school yeah. level, but you can see that a guy's got a high IQ but there's a lot to learn at the college level with so defensive much. rotations, coverages, offensive reads. How can you speed up a player's learning curve at the college level? You have to, as a coach, and it's hard as a, as a parent, it's hard as anything. You got to let them play through mistakes. You know, you, you can't, you know, punish or take out or, you know, you can teach, but you can't like punish and, and, and berate and, you know, embarrass, you know, you got to let them play through those mistakes, teach them, show them, and then go again and show them film. And so, you know, the, for me, I, I think film does a lot because I can just click it. I, I watch so much film. I, I know they taught me how to screen capture and send it away on an email or a text. It's so easy now. And so it, it's, it, you know, sometimes you'll go through a practice, we'll go through a practice and we'll play and there'll be some correcting, but we're not going to stop it. You know, we, 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 we want, our players to be as free as they can on the offensive side and then defensively we'll stop things and do th stuff like that but you you got to let these guys make and play through mistakes you know they're going to make mistakes I mean you, you turn on NBA game last night the biggest play was my man who traveled I mean yeah that's a tough play that's a huge play 
You know, and then in the game before, McCollum dribbles to the corner, picks his dribble up and gets the ball stolen for a layup and dunk. Those two plays, I mean, what are you going to eat? I mean, I can guarantee you in those situations next time, in that situation, they won't do that. And so you just got to hope that you're teaching and, and you're, you, you have some patience um, because you, you've got to let your guys play through mistakes. You're watching. I mean, you can watch the best players in the world and you know this the best. You play in the NBA. You're going to always make mistakes. That's the game. But are you going to have somebody who's going to encourage you to, you know what, you'll make that play better next time. You know, don't like, don't, we, there's no like absolutes with me. You know, I, I can't say, hey, don't shoot a run-legged runner. I can say, hey, you know, I don't want you to work on, you know, it's the game. It's going to, it changes, you know, you, you know, I don't know how you're going to defend me and you may double me and you may try to split it or throw it, you know, but you want to teach them through those moments. And, you know, you don't want to, you know, hold, you know, stay too long on something. You just want to move to the next play, but you want to teach them. And so I think film is huge for us. And I think that's how they, they start to learn. And if you watch this team, if you watch my team this year, um, you can see a lot of turnovers early. You can see the a lot of bad shots early. Um, everybody's probably thinking, "Oh my God, he just lets his guys do whatever." Jeez, look at that shot! Look. But if you watch us at the end of the year, and if you if you look at our numbers, we we were the number one assist team, I believe, with baskets made in the WCC, which I, I was very proud of. And then you see our guys' shooting percentages go up, and you see our wins, and so the ball's moving a little bit, and you see our scoring, you know, tick up a little bit. And so I think it just takes the guys a little bit to learn how to play again because. You know, we did have some transfers in here and they didn't, you know, you know, grow with me from their freshman year on. We just had to break some habits that, you know, would, would work in our system. So, like we said, 19 wins. Was that did you guys have a goal going into the season or was your focus on, hey, game one, let's compete. Let's see where we need to get better and then prepare for game two. How was it in year one for you and in, in your outlook? So in the coach's office, in our office, you know, we were saying we're going to the tournament. We've got to get to the tournament. You know, we want to win 20 games. We want to be one of the top teams in the league. Now, you know, we only got to beat certain teams for 40 minutes. You know, you say that, you know, and but with our team, you say, hey, we want to get better game to game. You know, we, you know, for us, you know, we don't have to be realists. We have to make sure our guys are staying confident. And, and for, but for us, it was like, hey, we got to get better game to game. This has worked before. You know, I've showed them seasons where we started off two and nine at my previous spot. And then all of a sudden we are, you know, you know, 19 and 11, you know, and so there's, there's those goals. And so, and, and luckily I had three guys who were with me, you know, Jack got hurt, but you had two other guys that were playing and then Mike got hurt. And you had T-Rob that was playing that all understood. That's the kind of stuff that happens in the season. And he was able to tell some of these other guys who haven't been in winning programs, Hey, if you guys just stick with this, we're going to get better and better. And so, you know, having that, um, having them in there, you know, I, our goal was to get to the NCAA tournament as a team in the coaches locker room, I, you know, in our offices in here, we think, Hey, let's just try to be top three. We can do this, you know? Um, but with our guys, it was game to game. Our goal is to get to the NCAA tournament. That's our goal. Uh, but with our team, every, every, you know, you start out, you're going to win the championship. That's, that's your main thing. That's the whole thing you want to do. And so that's what you're pushing towards and with your guys. You know, you want to kind of flatten that out and let them know, Hey, we're going game to game, but this is our ultimate goal, but we got to get better game to game. And so, um, and the coach's office is, is, is high hopes. Everything's in there when you walk in. Everybody's great. You know, you see everybody at their best. Uh, the players, you know, are a little bit more realistic than the coaches. And so we got to get them on our vision. The players, the players are the most realistic people in the world. But it's the coaches that, you know, have all these <laughs> things that we want to go to the tournament sweet 16. It can happen. You see St. Peter's, you see. And so, you know, we have those dreams. I think the players are like, hey, let's just you know, we're going to get in here, we know, and then we try to get them and our visions and their visions, we try to match them together. You spent a number of years at Eastern as an assistant, then you did a tremendous job as a head coach. So you had been in Cheney for a while. What was yeah. the biggest adjustment to a new campus, a, a new program, a new league? Uh, because I'm sure you had a number of them. Yeah, well, first off, was just trying to figure out the ins and outs of, of, each, of each trip. Um, you know, like, like you got, like, if I'm, if we're going to play Weber state, I know exactly what hotel I want to stay in. I know exactly what room I want to be in. If we can get that, there's, you know, there's all those things. There's just things you, you, you know, you want here. It's just like, you don't know what you don't know. Um, comes to academics, comes to, you know, the seats in the arena, comes to all that stuff. So all those things are all brand new. And, and that was something that I didn't really prepare for that much. 
uh, moving forward. You know, you don't prepare for all that stuff. You think everything's just going to be in place and this is going to be easy. This, but it's it, those are things that were really hard. You know, what are we going to do before a game? You know, do you have enough time? Games are here at seven o'clock, not six o'clock. You know, um, you know, sometimes our timeouts are here is a little bit longer because we're on TV and just all those little things that you don't think about um really really catch up and it, it sometimes can be overwhelming if I'm being honest um you know the academic thing I love to practice in the morning and then I want guys to have study hall in the evening but they have classes here in the evening now you know they don't have all this you know so it's, it was it was just a lot of things coming at you that were brand new that you didn't have any idea and a lot of control over this year I think will be a little bit better for me um where I can understand now things like hey there's a class at 7 30 tonight 7 7 7 30 p.m till 10 it's like, how did, you know, you have study hall. No, you have class. And so now it's trying to figure out, okay, how can I have them have study hall because they need it. Um, but then also, you know, with this 7.30 PM class, now do you want them to have morning practice? Now you have this, then you have study hall. Then you, now you really have no life as a, as a student athlete, which I don't want to have happen. And so now, you know what, we're going to have a, an hour of study hall in my office. You want to, you know, so now we just got to figure out each guy can't be on the same schedule as each other. So that's something new. So there's a lot of new things. And at, at points this time, it was kind of a little bit overwhelming, to be honest with you. How about the Portland basketball community? I grew up in that area. I remember when they went to the NCAA tournament in 1995. I know they had some really good years under Eric Reveno as well. Um, but did you see a building of interest in your program? And then is that starting to uh, kind of be a positive impact on the recruiting trail for you. Yes. Um, the, yes. Yeah, and you, you're from out here. So, you know, they, they, they love basketball. Area. It's kind of parallel, not, you know, you got your, you know, on Spokane, it's crazy. Everything is strictly on GU, right? Um, here you got, you know, the trailblazers, you got Portland state down the way, you got some other things, but um, you know, it's GU and Spokane. And so you could see a couple of those things and how crazy and excited they get about basketball out here, especially, you know, the in-state kids, you know, <laughs> I bet you they would have they would have done anything to keep you here, you know. And so, you know, there's kids in 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 our in our you know right in our city that are really good that you know everyone knows about. Um, you know, every you go you go down to the 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 local coffee shop cathedral down the way, they all know who you are. They know your players. Um, they they they're really basketball junkies and they want you to be good. And so, that's something that you know I'm I'm really excited about. You know, you got the Trailblazers and you got us. And yeah, I mean, so those are some things that are, are exciting, you know, because they, they do follow basketball. They know it. And, um, you know, they know when you're playing hard. They know the players. They, I mean, I went down to uh, uh, one of the food trucks and the guy sitting there says, oh, Chris Austin, man, that kid is really good. He comes here and he's one of the best kids I've seen play in a long time. And I'm like, oh, where would you see Chris? Oh, we just watched him on TV the other day. It's like, oh, wow. I mean, there's just... It's just the community is really huge. Are you going to get that one kid over at at Roosevelt? He's really good, ain't he? And so they they there's a there's some there's some things there. And then you got people who came to school here that are alumni that are amazing that stayed in this area. And and so yeah, there's there's a nice little following here. And you just like you said, with everything else, you got to start winning and doing things the right way and and making sure you have a good product for for the fans to enjoy. And and you want your guys to be out in the community as much as possible for that reason. You grew up in, in Southern California or, or Central California. Yeah. Um, and then you spent time at Eastern Washington. You go to Portland where I know with your coaching circles, you probably came across many AAU coaches, high school coaches. But how do you develop that relationship quickly so those coaches who have influence trust you and what you're building? Because as you mentioned, it's a good basketball community and you want to get the best kids to stay home if possible. Well, you have to have them around. Um, you know, you got to, you know, your relationships and you got to have great assistant coaches, right? And because they're going to be the ones that I have young guys, uh, Bobby Suarez, you know, TJ Lipple and Jeremy Pope who are around, they, they, they know everybody. And so you got to make sure those guys are, are good guys and they're out doing what they're supposed to do. And, and you just got to have good relationships. You know, you, you got to make sure like, you know, there's, there's some guys that, that, that you, you deal with um, and there's some guys that you, you deal with and you say, you know what? they've only given me, they've only told me about bad players. And so like, you got to keep those guys cool, but you don't want to have any kind of relationship with them because they're just trying to, you know, get their guy to the next fight. And that's cool. And all you just got to find out which ones are those guys. And then you got to figure out and let the guys know, Hey, this is what we're trying to do. These are our visions. These are the type of players we like. Sometimes you take a flyer. And now if, if those coaches are like, okay, I understand what he's doing. 
you know, we, we have open practices. So high school coaches, AU coaches, everybody has been by, I believe, our practices this year. So I think they see that we're running a good program. We have good players here. Um, and then you just throughout this whole time, you, you, throughout the years, you meet people that will be like, I know what kind of player you like. Here's a kid. Um, he's kind of under the radar, but he will fit your system. And then you you follow up and you see that kid and he does fit your system and he is a perfect kid for you. It's like I could I could deal with that guy because he's trying to get his player to the best spot and, the mo you know, the spot that's going to help him most. And, you know, you, you start figuring out who's really about the kids and those are the guys you really want to deal with. And then who's about, well, I need to get this so I can get this next shoe deal or I want to, you know. And so you start figuring out as you go along who are the good ones and, and who are the guys that are really just, you know, hindering kids and just using kids to get what they need in their personal life so they could be prosperous and move forward. But you can do both, I believe. And and I just think there's some guys that do it right and some guys that don't. And so you find the ones that you, you, you like and sometimes it works out and it's perfect. And other times you just, you know, more times than not, you find the guys that, you know, are all about themselves and, and they're really not about helping the kids out, which is, is tough because, you, you know, you, you deal with these guys a lot and, Sometimes you find the perfect kid. Here's a good example. You find the perfect kid. He's the perfect fit for you. He doesn't have too many other looks. And then all of a sudden he has a good, he has three good games in the summer. And now he gets recruited by all these other schools and you've been dealing with them the, the most. And they know it's the perfect fit. The family likes you the most. And this guy's telling him in his ear, well, you can go play at UCLA, man. You can go. And then he goes to UCLA, sits on the bench for three years or two years and then wants to leave. And it's like, he would have been perfect here. And so you, you want to find the, the people that understand that mostly who've done it before, who played before, or has a great understanding for like, this is, this will fit this kid. You know, not every big school is going to fit that kid. Maybe this might fit the kid to get him to where he wants to go. And so those, those, those guys are hard to find, but they're out there. There's a bunch of them out there. Well, that scenario just, you just mentioned kind of led me into the next thing I wanted to ask you about. And that's the transfer portal. Yeah. Um, it's 1500 players or so now. You have to put your name in by May 1st uh, to be able to, to kind of sift through that. But I read a, I, I saw a great stat the other day as in regards to conferences, the West Coast Conference has been affected least, one of the least with the transfer portal as far as guys putting in their name um, and kind of seeing whether opportunities may be out there. How do you as a head coach kind of sift through and figure out truly what's going on in the portal because i can imagine it's yeah. overwhelming it is it really is and, and what the, the knock on the west coast conference thing is 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 if you're looking at all the the top players in the west coast they've stayed they stayed in their spots you know and i think that has a lot to do with you know your not your school but gonzaga you know it has a lot to do with seeing those guys and seeing the saint mary's guys and i think it has a lot to do with guys that they've seen oh this guy has done a good job he stayed there it's worked out for him. And so, you know, having the transfer portal right now and also having the NIL stuff right now is, is you, you could, all, you know, I wish one of them would have came earlier and then you get the other one so you can work on both of them. And, but right now it's just, everyone's out and they're trying to figure out what to do. And now what's funny is <clears throat> you only had to worry about as a coach early on guys in your got your players here, like, okay, we're trying to recruit this kid. He's in his ear. Now we're not going to get him now. You got a guy and now he's playing for you. And now you got that same guy now who can now get his claws or hooks or whatever you want back into that kid, back in his ear, telling him, hey, you need to leave. You need to you need to find a new spot. You only averaged nine points a game this year. If you would have been at X school, you would have averaged 25. And that, no, you wouldn't have. You know what I mean? And so and so now you have to deal with that. Now you have to go through the portal. Now you don't know who's in there for the, what reasons. And, <clears throat> you know, there's guys that are in the portal because their coach got fired. There's guys in the portal because it's just not a great fit for them. It, there's guys in the portal for the right reasons. And there's guys in the portal that got pushed in the portal by either a coach. Now, I'm not saying coaches are all innocent here, but guys got pushed by coaches or guys got pushed by, you know, the guys in their ear or parents in their ear. And so it, it just, it's turned out to be, like you said, 1,500 kids in there. I'm saying probably about, 20% of those guys will probably move on and have prosperous careers, but probably, and then about all those leading scores that you've seen that are jumping in the portal, they're not going to be the same guy at the new spot because those, there's, there's already some board, there's already some guys there, you know? And so it's just so hard to shift through this thing right now and find the right guys. And, you know, everyone has their own thing that they're looking for in the portal. Everyone, you know, I, <clears throat> I was just, I'm two years removed from Eastern Washington where I didn't have one kid transfer or a transfer on my team. They're all high school kids. Wow. And so for me, this is all brand new. 
You know, the last two, when I was at Eastern Washington, I mean, I had a JUCO transfer, but everybody else was all high school kids. And so it's, 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 a t- it, it's new for me. And so having to shift through this and, you know, be picky about a kid and, and say, hey, well, you know, I understand what happened here and this is a good spot for you. Or, you know, I, and again, having it, and it just feels wrong when an AU coach or a high school coach or a, a, somebody who has the best interest, I don't know what you want to call them, a runner, <clears throat> calls you in the middle of the season and says, hey, this kid's thinking about leaving. And I'm like, this kid's averaging 16 points a game on a team that's, you know, playing for a league championship. What are you talking about he's thinking about leaving? When did you talk to him? Oh, just got off the phone with him. I'm out. I, I mean, I, I'm out. I don't want that kid. He's going to change him from this. And that's the craziest thing that, you know, we have to deal with as coaches is you have to shift through that. And yeah, that kid may be perfect for your team, but you got to think like, who else is he calling? You know, yeah, that and, brings up a great point. Like if you're getting calls in the middle of the season or even right after the season, and you know, that kid is in a, probably a, the best scenario better that situation that he'll be here. Yeah. And it's better than anything else they could find out there. Why then would you trust that kind of handler or AAU coach down the road if they're they're really not in it for that player's best interest? And, and there you go. <clears throat> and then on my side, it's like, okay, did he really talk to the player? Or is he just out here just searching so when the player's done, he can say, Hey, I got these schools for you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So now if you're in a whole, you're in a whole new ball game, and it's like, okay, now you got to. You don't know if the, you know, I'm thinking more kid, he's not interested because he's, he's doing great at that school. Why would he leave? He's the leading scorer. He plays the most minutes. He does everything in it. You know, now if he wants to say, Hey, I want to go to a, a, a bigger school, or I want to, you know, I want to play in the WCC because that's my dream. Then I get that, but it's like, and I didn't have these options early, but it's like, where's that, you know, the, the loyalty of this game and the sport is, is starting to, you know, it's starting to just get hammered on and, and, you know, I transferred um as a player you know I went to go play for Ray Lopes as a player and so you know I love Cal um but I had a a, a a loyalty and everything to to my big bro you know at the time transferring wasn't you know the the thing to do so I, I had real reasons why I wanted to leave I didn't have the same philosophies and, and I was told different things as a player from my coaches and so that's a whole different thing but I wasn't leaving just to go leave and because somebody's in my ear I I, I left for real reasons you know and 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 I think it bettered my career, it bettered me as a person, it bettered me it just as a, as a whole individual, as a whole, it was my decision. And so you look at some of these things and there's some, there's some guys out there that it, it'll, it'll be perfect for the transfer, but there's some guys out there that it's just, it, you scratch your head when you think like, this guy's really transferring, why? Like, why would he leave? And so yeah. if, he's, if he's unhappy in that role and he's coming here to be a, a spot up corner guy, <laughs> that ain't, that ain't, that's not going to work. He's going to be no. a, a disgruntled kid who's going to be bad and he's going to pull your chemistry down. And now as coaches, you know, we, we have, you know, it's a great job. It's a lot of things going on, but it just makes it even more stressful now because, you know, I, I really cherish chemistry. I really cherish team camaraderie. I cherish all that stuff. And so now it's like, what do you do? Do you say, okay, I'm bringing this kid in and he, you know, he was just at his last school. He was a, he was an alpha. We already have a couple is going to mix is going, you know, he may come here and ruin all that. And so you just don't know. And so it, it, it's really like, do you just, you know, have faith in all your high school kids and hope you can keep them, um, you know, and, and how, what are you doing? So the transfer portal is killer, man, but yeah. it, it can help. It can, it can boost you. Like it helped us last year. Moses Woods came here. He averaged five points a game. He ended up averaging 16. Chris Austin, was averaging 10 at his former school, came here more shots and everything, averaged 15 and a half. Tyler Robertson, his dumb coach left, so he decided to go. He, he's averaged 16, and he was all league WCC. And, and so, like, you have those success stories, but you also have ones that didn't come here and didn't get a chance to play, and it didn't work out for him. And he's not, you know, they're not going to be happy at the spot, so they want to leave again. And so those are those are tough spots to be in. And so, um, you know, th- those are the things that, you know, I think are concerning about it and alarming with uh, uh, alarming for, uh, you know, a lot of college coaches. But I, I really feel really feel bad for some of these kids that, you know, on both sides, either get pushed out or get told that they should go somewhere else. And now they're ending up in, with, in worse spots, maybe not even a scholarship. anymore. Well, the sifting of the portal and almost re-recruiting 
your roster for a lot of places, not you guys, because yeah. uh, just as most of the WCC, it's kind of stayed put. Yeah. Uh, and then the worries of the NIL right now, um, because I know college coaches can't be the the kind of conduit between people to get deals done, but I know you're being asked it. How do you just get away from things and relax as a college uh, coach? Because it can't be easy right now. It's not. Uh, I, you know, I, I love what I'm doing, you know, and, and I think if you love what you're doing, you can find all the positives for it, not the negatives. And so I, I love what I'm doing. I'm helping, I'm helping, you know, young men, you know, and families, you know, live their dreams out. You know, parents are getting their kids scholarship. I mean, that's the dream. I, I would, I, I, when my kids turn this age, I hope they have an opportunity to go do something they love and get paid for it or get the opportunity to go do it um, because it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. And so you, 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 you feel, you know, you feel blessed that you get to help people on their journey along in, in life. And so if you're, if you're doing it the right way, you're going to have kids leave, you're going to have kids come in, but I, I just feel like, yeah, I, it's a little stressful. It's a good stress because it's basketball. You know, I could be, you know, doing other things that are much more stressful that, you know, you think about daily and it's like, I got to do this, this, but you know, I, my, my, my wife is awesome. She knows all about, she loves hoops. So she's a part of it. She probably stresses me out more than anything else about all this other stuff, you know? Um, but being able to come to work and see your players and, and see that they're being successful, they're doing good at school and things like that, that, that really kind of makes you, you know, ex, ex, excited about it. Now you got all the other stresses, like you got to find a team, you got to do this, but I feel like if you're just doing it the right way um, and, and, and you feel you're like, Hey, I can put my head on the pillow at night and be like, I'm doing okay. I'm helping these guys out. You know, I I'm treating them right. We're doing it right. My assistant coaches, they, 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 my guys right now, and the reason I had to close my doors because it's the end of the year and all our players are in this, in our office, they're in here just messing with our coaches. And, but if you're doing it the right way and you make them feel welcome and you're hoping that, you know, these are things that, you know, they pass on to other teammates and different things. Like we've had transfers come in here and they spent time with our transfers and the guys that have transferred said, I've been at two schools before this has been the best environment we've been in that makes me feel good as a coach and I feel good about that you know and so there's a lot of stress that goes along with it with the NIL stuff with the transfer portal but you know if you have a great a good AD like I have a really good AD in Scott Lakeham he he has my back and so you know he he's going to he's going to be with me on the whole thing and then you have coaching staff like they are I mean those are things that really you know make me feel you know not too stressed too much you know um, and then going out winning games I mean that's the that's the most stress that's the best stress in the world having to try to figure out how to win so I can't wait until we start games again because this this stuff like you said is is, is mind-numbing sometimes well let's get back to the WCC because uh you know Gonzaga's in flux with five starters in the NBA draft right now most of them look like they're uh gone for good but then you look at USD no, I'm, kidding. I'm, kidding. I'm kidding I'm kidding no hey you, you got to pull and root no, for, but I'm for serious. your own yeah. opportunities. You look at USD. They had a tremendous coach in Steve Lavin. Todd mm -hmm. Golden at San Francisco heads to Florida, but Chris Gerlofson takes over. I like what Leonard Perry at Pacific has done in the transfer portal, bringing guys in. Yep. Where do you see the opportunity for Portland uh, at this moment in time? Granted, there will be a few changes before you know practice starts in October. Well, yeah, you look at it and, you know, you, you like you, you like you like where you're at because you're bringing back top six players. You're bringing back your top six players that, you know, you bring back your leading rebounder, assist, field goal percentage, shoot, all you're bringing your top guys that did everything in, in each category. You're bringing them back. Now you're hoping that the guys you bring in with size, the freshmen you bring in that are going to learn and, and pick up your system. So you feel like, you know, you're, you're right there because if you look at the teams that won last year, you know, take Gonzaga out because they had a freshman that – it was all world and they had some other freshmen that were really good and they had two year guys. But if you look at St. Mary's, all guys that were there, continuity, Santa Clara, continuity, San Francisco, continuity. And so that's I think that's why our league is good, because we have continuity right now. You know, you can go and say, well, they, you know, dang, I can't believe that BYU just put it on Oregon like that. Well, they had continuity, you know, that they had th those guys, they, they brought in one guy. But that one guy was really good, but they also had continuity. And so they had leadership at the top. And so that's why, you know, before the injuries at BYU, you know, with their two big guys getting hurt early, they were just blasting everybody because they had continuity. Those guys are three, four-year guys. And, yeah. and so you, you see the continuity. So this year we're going to say, hey, we got some continuity with our program. You know, last year we brought in 13 new guys, put them together. Now we're bringing back six guys that have all been together, that all played minutes, that were all together. And so you bring back continuity. And so you say, yeah, you see some turnover in the league, 
Um, you see new head coaches in the league. Steve Lavin's a great, you know, a great coach. Been to, you know, just done everything. You know, recruited me as a player. Um, I, you know, and so you you get to you get to see him in the league. You know, you you know you see you know you see Todd take off and go to Florida, but his replacement's a really good it was a really good assistant coach. He's going to be a hell of a head coach. And so now you're looking at that. And you got like you said, Leonard Perry. I mean, he. When the transfer report, he's got every every high major <laughs> transfer coming, and so now you look at that, and, and you're just going through the league, and and I watch the league all the time, constantly. That's I mean, any anything that happens in the WC comes to my phone, um, you know. And you're looking at Gonzaga. I mean, yeah, it's a, it, it's a it's a tough place to say, hey, you lost all five stars there in the NBA draft right now, but that's also a good place to be because you can go to your next five starters and say, hey, look, these guys are all in the draft and come play for me. I mean, he he he's got that thing rolling, so I'm not. I'm not too worried about what, you know, you, you don't see too much, but you, you know, it's there, it's underneath. And so you're looking at all these things and you're like, man, okay, BYU's losing some guys to the transfer portal, but they're also bringing guys in. And so when you're in a conference like ours um, and where we're, you're seeing guys get drafted, um, you, you know, the guard at Santa Clara is getting drafted, but they're bringing back, you know, a couple of guys, Winslow's coming back. They got, you know, they're, they're bringing back a team. And so same with St. Mary's. And so it, it's fun to see. And, you know, I, you know, it's going to be a battle. I think our team will be ready um, for next year. I think our staff will be ready, but it's going to be a, a league where it's like, you'll have Gonzaga again. I know they're just going to pick up talent. They have talent. <laughs> see, let's not forget those five guys are in the league. But the other five guys that were sitting on the bench will definitely slide in and they'll be in the same role next year. And so, you know, what they're going to probably try to you know, figure out is are we going to have enough depth, you know, and, and for them, they're going to be able to make it, you know, a, a tourney run um, and, and like they like they have shown they can do. But they have talent and everyone in this league is going to have talent. So, you know, I like that we have some continuity coming back with our top, you know, our top guys. And so that's why I feel like we have a good chance to, to have a pretty good season next year. Well, Shante, I appreciate the time. Thanks for joining the ISO, and I'm sure we'll connect over the summer. So uh, best of luck in uh, the transfer portal when you need it uh, and get some, get some rest and relaxation leading into the summertime.